the Yardbirds are one of the seminal bands in rock and roll history, and they recently brought their blues-based rock to fans on the East Coast, playing Irving Plaza in New York City a few weeks ago. The Yardbirds have been helmed and kept alive by rhythm guitarist and bassist Chris Dreha and drummer Jim McCarty. The band pioneered what would become the sound of classic rock with hits For Your Love and Train Kept a Rollin', which was also covered by Aerosmith, and they also played early versions of Dazed and Confused, before then guitarist Jimmy Page brought it to the new Yardbirds, or as it became known, Led Zeppelin. And by the way, they also had aspiring guitarists Jeff Beck and Eric Clapton in the fold at various points in the band's existence. The UK band doesn't make many trips to the US to play, and these days Dreha and McCarty have fleshed out the band with guitar phenom Ben King, bassist David Smale, and lead vocalist Andy Mitchell. Dreha couldn't tour due to an undisclosed illness, and we asked McCarty, seated next to King, how he was doing. He's doing a lot better, yeah. <clears throat> He's at home. Uh, he lives in Fulham in South London and uh, recuperating, you know, he's up and down. But he can drive now. He's allowed to drive. So, uh, <laughs> no, but he's, uh, he's OK. He's getting on. He's getting there. Guitarist Ben King, who was filling the shoes of Paige Clapton and Beck, talked about the biggest challenge in playing with the Yardbirds. The Yardbirds in general, I suppose it's, it's, you know, you're stepping into the shoes of these three guitar legends, so everyone's always kind of like, wow, you've got big shoes to fill and stuff like that. But, you know, I never really try and think about it. I just think, well, you know, I'm never going to... I can't compete with that. I'm not that kind of person. I just think, well, I'll do my thing, but I also just use my ears and listen into the music and the feel of the music and remind myself occasionally with the records and stuff as to what it was about and, uh, and try and kind of channel that. I think it's quite natural. It's been quite natural to, to the, the way the Yardbirds play, the energy within the band. It's sort of some, something that comes quite naturally. It's, it's really exciting and it's fun to do. And, you know, that never really uh, has been been anything that's had to I've had to work on it just sort of happens which is why I love doing it you know the Yardbirds were not a contiguous band as a relentless touring schedule and pressure forced members to leave eventually breaking up the band in 1968 many bands when they leave the garage think they'll be together forever we asked McCarty when the illusion of being a band or the Yardbirds for the rest of their lives was shattered. When did it get shattered? Well, it was, t it was tough, you know, travelling around and it was very stressful in those days because we were on the road the whole time, you know. We never, um, never really had a holiday. We just kept going and kept doing more and more tours and people would get fed up and tired and pissed off, you know, and... and uh, Actually, one by one, they, each of the guys sort of left, you know, Paul Samuel Smith and then Jeff, and they, they all got stressed out. We ended up as the four-piece, and then Keith and I got stressed out, so that, that was the way, the way it went. The Yardbirds eventually reformed in 1992 and have been playing in various configurations since. A notable milestone in their comeback was 2003's Birdland, which featured appearances by their old guitarist Jeff Beck, Brian May, Slash, Steve Vai, and Joe Satriani, among others. The Yardbirds are working on a DVD for release later in the year, and we'll have more on that in the days and weeks to come.